Hi, I'm Jeff Everhart, a developer advocate with WP Engine. In this crash course, we're going to learn how to build a simple headless WordPress app using Next.js and WP GraphQL. So let's get started. The first thing that we're going to want to do is make sure that we have a number of prerequisites met. To do that, I'm going to switch over to my terminal application, and then I'm going to run two commands to make sure that I have Node and NPM installed. So the first thing I'll do is run the Node-V command, which should print me out a version of Node. Then I'll do the same thing with NPM-V to print me out NPM's version number. If neither of those print, out, print you out version numbers, you'll need to install those pieces of software from their respective websites, or use a tool like NVM, Node Version Manager, to manage those on your machine. Next, we're going to set up a local WordPress site to use as our data source for this headless app. If you have a WordPress site installed somewhere else, feel free to use that and you can follow along with the next few steps on that site, but I'm gonna run us through creating a really quick local installation of WordPress using the local development tools. So I'll switch over to my local tab. We can see here that I don't have any sites created. So I'm gonna really quickly click the create a new site button and then I'm gonna give it a name and we'll call this Crash Course. I'm gonna go ahead and click Continue. Uh, we don't need anything custom, so we'll go ahead with the preferred setup. Click Continue and then we'll give a WordPress admin username and password and then click Add Site. Now that's gonna take just a couple of seconds to provision the site for us. And depending on your security settings, it may ask you to authenticate. And once it does, it should take just a moment to install a new WordPress site on your system. Once local is done installing, we can click this button to open up the WP admin interface and we can log into our site. And so from here, we're gonna to want to check a couple of settings and install a plugin called WP GraphQL to connect our headless WordPress app to our front end. So the first thing that we'll do is just check um, our general permalink settings. What we want to make sure is that uh, this is set to post name. That's fine. So let's go from here, go into the plugins menu, add new. Then we will up here, sort, search for WP GraphQL. And that should be the first result that we get. And we can go ahead and click install now. And when that is finished installing, we can click activate. To activate it. With the plugin activated, we can see that it adds a GraphQL menu option over here on the left. We have both an option to get into the graphical IDE, which we'll explore in the future, and then also the settings page. So while we're here, let's click on the WP GraphQL settings menu, and then let's scroll down to this option to enable GraphQL debug mode. Let's click check that box and then come down and click save changes. Now enabling WP GraphQL debug mode is going to make it a lot easier for you to debug requests as you're developing your queries in the graphical IDE and then integrating those queries into our application in the next step. So from here, the next thing that we're going to want to do is get our Next.js app up and running locally. To do that, uh, you can come out to the blog post that's linked below this video. And if you scroll down to the section for um, Next.js app running locally, and you click this link to the repository, that will get you the repository for this course. So what I'm gonna do from this pane is come in here and I'm gonna copy this HTTPS link, and then I'm gonna hop back into my terminal. I'm just gonna clear this out to give us some more space, and we can see that I'm inside of my code directory, but you would wanna run this command in whatever directory you want your code stored in. So I'll go ahead and we're gonna clone this using git clone. So we'll do git clone and then I'm gonna paste in the URL I just copied from GitHub and then click enter. And then that is going to clone our project. Um, and then we can also CD into that directory. So we're gonna do CD, we'll do LS just to make sure we've got this. And I'm actually just gonna copy this here and then we'll do CD and I'm gonna paste in the name of that directory since it's rather long. And then we'll be inside of that directory. So I'll clear that out, give us a little bit more space uh, to work with. And now that we're inside of our project directory, we're going to, going to want to install all of our NPM resources and then run that uh, in development mode. So we'll do NPM install, which is gonna install all of the project's dependencies. And then once we've done that, we can hit NPM run dev. When we do that, that's gonna spin for just a second, compile all of our assets, and then make that 
application available over localhost 3000. So if we open up a browser tab and go to localhost 3000, uh, we should see that we get a uh, basic, our basic headless WordPress Next.js starter right here. And this template has already been pre-populated with some test data for you, so it should be fully interactive and we can click around it and explore the different blog posts. And what we'll do throughout the process of this course is replace this test data with data from our live WordPress site. So now that we have that installed, we're gonna to want to do one thing um, and I'm gonna hop into my terminal real quick and I'm going to stop our node server using control C, Just clear to give us some more space. And then I'm actually going to open this directory up in VS Code. Okay, so inside of this project directory, we have all the things that are gonna run our Next.js app, but what we also have is just some seed data that we can use for our WordPress site. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually going to right click this XML file and I'm going to reveal that in Finder. We'll just drag that over here and then I'm gonna swap back to my WordPress site, uh, come back in there and then from setting tool, I'm gonna to go to tools and then import. And then once I have the import menu loaded, I'm gonna um, go ahead and install the WordPress importer plugin. And that should run, and then it should allow me to run the importer. So I'm gonna do that, and we'll open back up our finder, and drag our XML file over here, and then upload that file. And what it's gonna ask us to do now is reassign the posts to our admin on this site. And I'm going to skip this option to download and import file attachments. That doesn't always work as well as it should. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click submit. Uh, and now if we go into posts, we should see that we have a couple of test posts that we can work with beyond our hello world example. So with that done, let's go ahead and close out our finder window and then let's hop back into uh, VS Code and proceed with the next step, which is connecting our Apollo GraphQL client to WordPress. So if you open package.json, you'll see that there were a couple of dependencies installed for you. Uh, the first one is this Apollo client package. Now Apollo client is a package that helps us make GraphQL requests from our JavaScript app, apps, in this case, our Next.js app. Um, and what we're gonna do is uh, use that to request data from our WordPress site. So the first thing that we're gonna to need to do to get this going is create a .env file. So what I can do here is just right click into the root of my project directory, click new file, and then I'm gonna, just gonna do .env.local. Now env.env.local .env files are a convention for Next.js, and this is what Next.js is going to look for when it boots up to load any environment variables that we want available in our application. Go ahead and save that file, and then uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and add our first entry. So inside of this file, we're going to want to add uh, a next public WordPress API URL. And then we're gonna do an equal sign. What we're gonna do here is hop back over to local, and we are going to, or even the browser, maybe that's uh, another option, we hop back over here, we can just copy the, the base of our WordPress URL, go back into our code and paste that in there. And we'll just make sure that we remove any trailing slash there because we're gonna add it later with our code. So we'll go ahead and save that file. Um, and then what we'll wanna do is come back into our terminal and we can do npm run dev again. So if you have the server running and you make a change to the environment variables file, you're gonna to want to stop your server using control C and then restart it using npm run dev. So let's hop back into our code. And now that we have this installed in our environment variable, the next public WordPress API URL available, we're going to want to actually start configuring Apollo client. So to do that, let's open up this lib folder and inside of it, we should have a blank file named Apollo.js. This is where we're going to import Apollo client and configure it and then make it available to the rest of our application. So the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is write an import statement. And so we're gonna import two things. We're gonna import Apollo client uh, from the Apollo client package. And then we're also going to import something called in-memory cache. Now in-memory cache is a caching strategy that we're gonna use for Apollo client that should help speed up your applications. 
And now that we have these two imports set, what we're gonna wanna do is actually create an export. So we're gonna export uh, const, and then we're gonna call this variable client. And we're gonna set that equal to a new Apollo client. And then inside of that, we're going to pass a configuration object. So the first property on that configuration object is gonna be the URI. This is the URL or the address of the GraphQL server that we're going to be querying. So what we're gonna do here is this is where we're going to use our environment variable from the .env file. So we'll open up a temple, template literal with some backticks, and then we'll use this to interpolate a variable. So we're gonna say from process, dot env we're going to get uh, this value which is going to be equal to whatever we define it in this file and then from there we're going to append this graphql um, route onto that uh, which is which is the address of our graphql server on wordpress so after that then we'll also special specify what kind of cache we want to use um, and so this we're just going to create a new in-memory cache what that allows you to do is it allows Apollo client to cache the requests that you make in your application's memory so that instead of um, having to go out to your WordPress server every time, it can use commonly, commonly used responses very quickly. So we'll go ahead and save that stuff out and then we'll uh, proceed to use that in the rest of our application. And so in addition to creating this instance of Apollo client, we're also going to want to make some changes to uh, our JavaScript app. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to implement what's called the Apollo provider pattern. And what this allows us to do is it allows us some flexibility in how we use Apollo client. So the examples that we have as a part of this crash course are going to use this client object to make requests of the GraphQL API. But the Apollo provider pattern that we're going to go over right now would also allow you to use the use query hook inside of your React components. So it gives us as developers a couple of different ways to query with WP GraphQL, uh, just depending on how we want that data passed down throughout our component tree. So what we'll do inside of our, we're gonna open up our pages folder and then go into this underscore app.js file, which really is the root of our, of our Next.js application. Um, and so what we're gonna do here is we're going to do another import. So from that, from, this, we're going to import Apollo provider and then that's going to be from a separate package so that's going to be from Apollo client and then we're going to get that from this react subfolder all right so once we've got our Apollo provider uh, component imported we're going to want to um, also but right below that we're going to, going to import our client as well because we'll pass our client into Apollo provider. And so that we're gonna do this dot dot lib slash Apollo. So we've got two imports, Apollo provider and our client that we configured in the last step. Okay, so what we're gonna do from here is we're gonna come down inside of the return statement for our, our sort of my app uh, root element. And then we're going to actually open up an Apollo provider component. We're going to make sure that that Apollo provider component wraps this component that gets all of our page props. And then Apollo provider itself is going to take a property as well. And that is going to be a client property and we're going to pass it the client that we configured in the last step. Okay, so we configure this instance of Apollo client then use the Apollo provider pattern to pass that client into all of the React components that are under this inside of the component tree. Okay, so with these things in place, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to look at our index page. And when we get in there, let's start talking for a second about Next.js and routing. So Next.js uses something called a page-based routing method, which means that each one of these pages or files inside of our pages folder is gonna to correspond to a particular route. So this index file is essentially the root of our website, and we'll look at what this dynamic route is in just a second. So inside of each page-based route file, uh, what we essentially do is we export uh, a component that becomes our page component. So we can see here that we import a number of different things, and then we're exporting this function home that's gonna take in um, some params, this post params, and then return a JSX expression. 
okay, that looks a little bit like this. You can see we've got a div with a class name container. Inside of it, we have a head, a main element, an H1, all of the things that we see on the front end of our blog. So each page-based route in Next.js needs to return a page component that can be then composed of other components like we see down here, where we, when we look at our post grid. Right, we're passing in this array, this posts array, which is an array of post data, and then we're mapping over that and returning a postcard for each post in that array. So now that we understand how Next.js uses page-based routing, let's talk about how we're going to implement data fetching inside of our application. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is scroll back up to the top of this file, and then we're going to need to import a few different things. Um, so we're going to do open up another import statement and inside of that import statement, we're going to import our Apollo client that we configured um, inside of lib slash Apollo. So we're going to do that and then we're also going to need to import uh, GQL. So GQL is going to help us format our GraphQL queries and then this is actually going to come from uh, the Apollo package. So we'll import both of those things. And then we'll scroll down to this function named get static props. And like I mentioned before, in some styles of React application development, each component can be responsible for fetching its own data. But with Next.js, which is a full stack framework, what we're doing in this example is actually statically rendering this page before the user visits it. And we do that using this function called get static props. When Next.js compiles, if calls whatever is inside of this get static props function, resolves all of the data inside of it, and then what we're going to do is return some props, um, and this allows us to pass data from this get static props function into our page component that we see here, so that the components downstream of that can use it to render particular UI elements like we see in our post example if we flip back into the browser. We take a look there, we see one for each one of those posts in our test data uh, post array. If we open up here and look at test data, yes, we see we've got four elements in there that correspond to the four elements on the page because that's the data that's getting passed in there. So what we're gonna wanna do is we're going to want to actually change what is inside of this get static props function to pull data from our WordPress site. So the first part of that is actually constructing the GraphQL query that's gonna get the posts we need. So the easiest way to do that is to actually hop back into our WordPress site and open up the graphical IDE. So we come to back to our WordPress site, go down to the GraphQL menu item, and then open up the graphical ID. From this screen, we'll open up the query composer, which is going to essentially pull in our GraphQL schema and then give us access to all of those properties and elements that we can use to visually create our GraphQL query. So what we'll do to start composing our GraphQL query is use this menu over here on the left to scroll down until we find the plural posts. So we'll click on posts, and then what we can see is that when we click on these elements in the left-hand pane, they are added to this query on the right. So what we'll do from here is click on posts and then open up the nodes menu, which is going to get us all of the nodes inside of a post. And then we will add these fields one by one to our post query over here. So we'll come down here, we'll say we want the, we know we want the title. Okay, so we want the title. Then maybe we want, we certainly want the content. Um, we're going to want um, the URI, which is uh, the URL of the post that we can use in our application later. And then we will also get the date. So scroll back up to the Ds and get the date. Now that we have that constructed, we can click this Run button to run our GraphQL query in real time. So we see that we do that and we get back data shape like this. We've got a, a node for each one of our posts with all of the data that we requested uh, in this query right here on the left. So as you're playing around, you can certainly add additional elements to this and use them in your application. But what we'll do right here is we'll actually rename this to get all posts. And then we're gonna go ahead and copy the query that is inside of this middle pane. We're gonna to toggle back into our VS code. So now that we have our query, what we're gonna do is change out some of the lines inside of get static props to format that query 
and then execute that query against our WP GraphQL server. So the first thing that we'll do is delete this, this line on line 44. And then what we're gonna do is create another variable called get posts. Set that equal to, I'm gonna use our GQL object and then use backticks to open up a template literal. So I'm gonna just give myself some space and then I'm in, going to paste in that GraphQL query that we copied from our WordPress site. I'm just gonna indent this to make this look nice um, and clean up a little bit of this. And then now that we've got our, our GraphQL query formatted using GQL, then we're actually going to use our Apollo client instance to make a query. So what we'll do is we'll declare a new variable called response and set that equal to await client.query. Then inside of this query method, we're going to pass a configuration object. And there's a query property here. And then this is where we're going to actually pass our GraphQL query. Okay, so we can do that. Um, and then what we'll do here is these next lines should stay the same, right? Because we're gonna get a response back from uh, WP GraphQL. And then inside of this post variable, we're going to dig down into response.data.post.nodes. So if we kind of hop back over into here, we can see uh, how that's structured, right? So we've got response.data.post.nodes, which is an array with all of our post data. Okay, so that's great. So that should have automatically reloaded. So if we hop back into our browser, come back over here and let's hit this. Oh, I'm sorry, we might need to save that file first. But once we do, we'll just double check that that reloaded. Yep, Next.js should be watching those files and compile for us. Then we can hop back into Google Chrome, refresh that browser tab, and we can see that that all of those postcards should now be replaced with the post coming from your WordPress site. So now if I click through one here, we're gonna see that it tries to go to slash hello world and that gives us an error. Now that's actually what we would expect at this point because we still have not talked about dynamic routing. So we see there that we're using that URI element inside of our postcard component uh, as a link. And that's where each one of those is going um, to the URI of the post itself. But our WordPress app doesn't know uh, those URLs yet. So we need to work on our dynamic routes next. So we'll start that. We'll hop back into our code editor and get that started. So now that we're back in VS Code, we've made all of our changes at this point to this index file to make our, our WordPress application dynamic. But what we're doing there is we're just getting a list of posts and then we are rendering that, that array of posts into a grid of postcards. Um, now, what we want to do in most types of applications is use something called dynamic URL routes. In the last section, we focused on pulling multiple posts into this index page and then using that posts array to construct a post grid. Now, we're going to build on those examples in this next section, and we're going to work on creating a dynamic post detail page using dynamic routing. So dynamic routing is a huge concept in web development and it's necessary to create a site or application of any real size or sophistication. Now, what dynamic routing allows us to do is extract information from URL parameters and then use that information to construct a dynamic response in our application. Now, if we think about that in the context of what we're doing here, for our index page, we've constructed a query that says, go get me all of the posts and then render them here. That query doesn't change based on the URL that we visit. That query gets run every time this index page loads. But what we'll want to do, and we can see in practice in our, our application on, in Google Chrome, is that what we really want to be able to do is click a link, have that link pass through some information via its URI, and then we use that information to go and get the right data to display for the user. So let's see how that works in practice in Next.js. So I'm going to hop back into VS Code and I'm going to open up this file in our pages directory where we've uh, used the square brackets and then uri.js. Now, whenever we use this convention, the square brackets with a word inside of it, that is essentially signaling to Next.js that, hey, this page component is meant to be dynamic. Whatever I've put inside of square brackets, you need to look at the route in the browser and then give me that information back as a variable so that my application can use it later. So let's see how that works in practice inside of get static props. 
If we look at this page, it shouldn't look super different uh, from the other page-based routes we've already examined. We have some import statements and then we're exporting a default function that is a, a returns this React component. And then here we're also passing in some data inside of this, this page component. Okay, but it's let's it's what's inside of get static props that is the most important in this example. So we can see here that this is taking a some params as well, and those params are coming from Next.js as it m monitors the route in the browser. It looks at that route and passes us back params based on what is inside of that route in each one of those route segments. So here we get this params property on an object. And then that params object also has additional properties, right? So what we've said to Next.js is, hey, we're gonna have this dynamic route segment called URI, so I'm gonna to wanna to access, that, access that later, which I can do using this params option. So down here, inside of my get static props, I'm using uh, my test data function right now to say, all right, you know, go out, get me this post by URI, and then I'm gonna take the URI that I got from the user's request and pass that into this function. Then we'll do everything normally like we did in the other example, uh, and then pass that data into our page component to be used inside of subsequent components or to render those particular properties to the page, like rendering the title, for example. Now, Next.js's default behavior when you use get static props is to pre-render the page, meaning that that page gets rendered before a user visits it so that when they visit it, they're just getting that statically generated HTML and it's all a very quick interaction. Now that works great in our index.js file because there is only one of the only one possible combination of that file, right? We run this same query, there is no dynamic component to this. But when we add in the complexity of a dynamic route path, uh, we also need to add in this extra function down here called get static paths. And now what this allows Next.js to do is if you provide it a number of different paths, it will pre-render those and uh, essentially optimize your application for those routes. And now we need to mention that it's totally valid like we've done right here to pass in an empty array. And what that means is that at that point it will just essentially default to, to server side rendering. So when the user visits, it will process that HTML file the first time, send it back to them, and then each time that a user visits after that, it'll get that same generated HTML file. So really the first user is the one paying that performance hit. But if we wanted to optimize our application by passing in additional paths, so say for example, we wanted to pre-render our narwhal post, we could pass in that path, and it would do it for us and pre-generate that. And now it's good to know because there are typically a couple of ways developers approach this. You can either pass in your most re recent posts, you can pass in your most popular posts, whatever you know that your users are hitting the most frequently. It's a, it's a good idea to pre-generate those assets. So now that we've talked about that, let's shift our focus from get static paths back to get static props. So inside of get static props, we're going to want to uh, change out all of the code inside of here. And just like in the last example, we're going to start by generating a WP GraphQL query in Graphical to get the post by URI. So to do that, we'll hop back into uh, Google Chrome, go back into our Graphical IDE. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna delete this query out and then we'll make a new one that says get post by URI. All right, so we'll go ahead and clear this out as well and just kind of clean this back up. Yeah, I'll just delete this stuff out. And now that we've got a clean query to work with, we'll move back over to the Query Composer window and then we're gonna want to open up this post object. And then what we'll do here is we'll go ahead and leave this ID set um, and then we'll extract that into a variable. So if we click this dollar sign, we can see that it basically gets templated out um, and that what gets passed into this, this parentheses right here gets formatted as a variable and we'll, that's important and we'll use that in the next step. So we'll do that, we'll check ID and then um, format that as a variable. Then we're also going to check ID type and then we're going to come down here and we're going to click URI. So we've got ID checked, that extracted to a variable, ID type checked, and then the type of ID is going to be URI. 
All right, so now that we've got all that stuff set, we'll go over here and um, come down and add some fields. So we know that we want the title and the order of these fields really doesn't matter because we're gonna access it basically as JSON later. But for my own sanity, I like doing things like this. We'll do title content. Uh, we know that we're gonna want the date. Um, we're probably gonna want the URI as well. And then we're also on this example on our post details page, we're gonna want the author too. And so what we can do here, and this is where GraphQL is really useful and powerful, right? So we have this post data, and then we also have some author data. But what we can do is we can actually dig down into the author. We can open that up, open up the author node, and then we can come out here and we can get uh, the first name and the last name of our author. All right, so if we come back in here, click into uh, our query composer window, then let's go ahead and pass it in slash narwhal, which is the URI of our narwhal post. And if we click run, we should get back that data. All right, so this query looks good. So let's go ahead and copy what's in this middle pane here and we'll hop back into VS Code. And then we'll come down here and we'll do the same thing that we did in our last example. So we know that we're gonna to need to add two imports. So the first one we're gonna to need to import is our client. We're gonna import that from lib slash Apollo. And then we're also going to want to import uh, GQL from the Apollo package. Um, we'll change those to single quotes so everything's consistent. Okay, and so with those two things imported, let's hop down back into our get static props function. And then what we'll do here is we're going to want to declare a variable, um, get post, by URI, set that equal to GQL, and open our backticks, and then I'm gonna hop in here and paste our GraphQL query. And so there is one important thing that we're gonna to wanna to do in here that we need to change. Um, so here, in this first line where, where we are essentially passing this ID in, we're gonna to need to reformat that um, so that uh, essentially Apollo client and GraphQL knows that when we pass it an ID param into a, our variables later, knows to format that appropriately inside of the query. So to do that, we're just gonna do a capital ID and then we're gonna add an exclamation mark after that. So what that's gonna do is basically format this ID property, whatever we pass in as ID, uh, will get interpolated there and swapped out. Now that we have our GraphQL query formatted with GQL, let's uh, open up, and we're actually just gonna delete this right here, uh, this response line, and instead of awaiting our test data, we're going to await client.query, and then we'll call that method, and then that method is going to take a configuration object, so one of those properties on that configuration object is gonna be the query itself. So we'll do get post by URI. And then since we are passing it in variables, we're also gonna to need to tell it what those variables are. So we'll do that. Oh, now I've got a misspelling there. Variables, and then that is an object. And then we're gonna pass in an object with an ID property that's gonna to correspond to that variable right there. We're going to get that from params.uri. And now we should be able to go ahead and save this file. Everything else about it should work just fine. Response.data.post is how we would access that. And we can double check that by just looking inside of graphical. And that's typically what I do if I'm confused about the path that I need to traverse to get to the data. I'll look inside graphical. So we, you know, we get response.data. Uh, and then dot post should give us that object with title, content, all of the things that we would need. Okay, so now that we've got everything saved out, uh, we should be good to go. And if we flip back into Google Chrome and just refresh our index page, now if we click through to our Narwhal post, we should see that everything renders appropriately. We've got the title, the author, the date, and all of the post content. Congratulations on creating your first headless WordPress site. We've covered a lot of ground in this crash course, so be sure to review as necessary. Hopefully you have a better understanding of how to use Next.js and WP GraphQL to create these types of experiences for your users. Thanks for watching.